from Los Angeles. Clothes are on the floor. Ernie's not here yet, but he called before. Omar is outside again. What are you doing? What are you doing? What do you got? Is that a stick? Is that a stick? Is that a stick? Is that a stick? A little stick. Give me that little stick. Just a little. It's a little stick, dude. It's not for you. Just a little. <laughs> Pulled up on the block. Strat asked me, Ernie. Came fresh from a nap. Get him! Oh, shit. I thought you were pointing at something. No, I was pointing at you. Oh. That was like my life. That was like your rapper, like, hey. Yo, what up? In your fucking building. Back here. Back from LA. Back on the grind. Back from the loss. Angeles, no mic on the motherfucking cam. Going raw Blue dog. sticker pack. No mic. Sticker pack prototype that needs to get finished today. Boom. Oh wait, it's the wrong way because it says, oh, it's Teddy's sticker pack. Yeah. Bam. Which, by the way, the embroidered shirts are all loaded up and friends and family are ready to rock whenever we want. Okay. How, boys or whatever how much? $300. It's like 260 bucks for a half ounce. And two grams of wax. I was like, what? Alex was like, I'm gonna keep this wax. I was like, fuck you're not. I was like, take this shit home. When you say you wanna do a more cooking show, does it mean you want me to cook for you? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, dog. I was gone for a fucking week and now I come back and you want me to cook for you? <laughs> That's where we're at. Oh, I gotta get gas, motherfucker. Oh, gas station vlog. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome yeah. back. I'm gonna vlog while I get the gas, while I go in to pay for the gas. I was gonna go to the Chai, the Golden Dragon Arcade there with you. That was my idea. I what? think it's closed. That Golden Dragon coming soon and Golden Dragon Games. It's an arcade? Yeah, but it's closed. And this place, see that purple place? That was a smoker's club for a while. I've been gone for six days. What are you talking about? It, it felt like it was six days for you in Cali time, but it was a year here. Yeah, this place came and went. <laughs> it's a great place. We had a lot of good times there. That Cali weed is good. Yeah, it kills. Where's, I wish we had knew which vlog you were saying that Cali weed wasn't shit. People are in the comments like, Teddy's such a dick. No, Kelly Wee's just that good. That girl's freestyling. She's walking down the block, like straight up, like stacking. Kodak's out in like a week or two. Now. Yeah, I saw that. Hey, maybe he comes out with like the hottest shit ever. Maybe. Hopefully, someone good produces it. Kanye, Kanye, Kodak. That would be like I could die happy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know if those two go that well together. I mean, I'm sure he could produce it. It'd be like Quincy and Michael, you know. <laughs> And Kodak needs to collaborate with a motherfucking speech therapist first. <laughs> that way we can at least decipher what language he's rapping in. So far lately, it's just been, uh, it's been rough. Yeah, the, the last album was very slurry, but I kind of like it. I think there's something to it. Once <laughs> you listen to it. to it enough and it drones right. on in your head. You... I think that's with anything. You know, it's like the, the ability for humans to adapt is uncanny. And it is what you said about like Here's him as a person. Like, I just like him. Like, yeah. whatever. For he sure. says, I want to hear what he's going to say. You're interested in his story, which is all yeah. good. Being interested in his story is way different than being saying he's the best rapper alive, which is some of the shit that you've said. Yeah. There has to be a little contrast in this whole. That's true. In context. The cons. Yeah. By the way, I won't be at LA Sneaker Con since people keep asking. Yeah, no. No big blowouts. I, mean, I don't think that's you, it's the environment, and that's why people shouldn't bring their dogs in there. If it's, if it's an open place where they're like running around. Yeah. Like, it's like really, like your bitch ass dog doesn't need to be here. You don't drop your kid off at wrestling camp if he's a fucking chess player. No? That's saying? true. Fuck. That's true. Set your dog up for success. Speaking of dogs. Uh, there's been talk of getting another dog. Uh-oh. French Bulldog, possibly. Oh, shit. Out here at the gas station. Gas station pumping. Just doing a little vlog. There's Teddy in the background. Almost ran out of gas. Yeah. What's up, gas yeah. gang? It's Day yeah. Spring. We're gonna pretend to set the gas station on fire. Let's do the drive off with the pump in the tank crank. Oh, yeah. Tell Brandy should have pissed me off this morning driving off at the gas the tank. Trunk prank. It's not really a trunk. No. It doesn't have the same effect. From free glove, I ain't wearing one. Oh shit, it's a free glove. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, you wanna fucking merc someone out in these streets, you yeah, stop here real quick. Yeah, just stop real quick. Yeah, dog. Here's how you do the fucking pump and dump, all right? I'm gonna pump you clean, all right, buster? <laughs> <laughs> 
Now back to the vlog. We are about to smoke some fucking fire that we got from our friends at Natty Rems. Actually, this came from California because I put it in my bag before I got on the airplane. So <laughs> this is go. not from Natty Rems. We're smoking gelato. No, we're smoking tomato. We're smoking white lemons number 22. Wow. Lemon That's Jack crossed with the white. Oh, the white. We got a 30% indica and a 70% sativa profile from our boys at the jungle. jungle. Q Dr. Dre. Hey, 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 hey! Smoke weed. Where are those marble enemies? Yeah, dog. You got the marble enemies coming. You about to get a shoe review. No, you're not. No, you're not. The kitchen dog. This is exception. Action required. Action required? What do they want us to do? So, upon changing the camera battery, I dropped the tripod thing. And we had to pull them back. They hung up on us. Mm-hmm. I'm about to get in my answer. You need to contact directly where you ordered this package. Sir, because it's already a meter um, delivery change. There hasn't been any delivery change and I was just offered to go pick it up and I don't even know where to pick it up because your automated system is trash. That doesn't make any sense. I'm not contacting China. I need these products right now. I'll come pick them up today. Okay, it's already available for pickup. I'm going to provide you the address one moment. What? Why would he just say that? I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. He's trying to give me a five. What are you doing? I don't have a free hand. Five. High five, bro. High five. Uh, See you tomorrow. Yeah, or maybe later tonight. I don't know. What's going on later tonight? I don't know. Hmm. Hey, <laughs> okay. I'm back from California, from Los Angeles. So, so many things to talk about, I guess. Also, so many things not to talk about. Oh. Where do I even begin? It feels good to be rested. Like I slept in and I didn't have to worry about editing. Like getting the day like going and crazy. Uh, so that was good. That was good to take that break. Uh, I didn't really draw at all and I just hung out with Alec. I guess I don't even know. Like life is fucking crazy. The vlog started because I usually, when I go through any kind of breakup or I guess trauma, anything that's traumatic experience uh, or loss, I tend to bury myself in work and like creating stuff and that's when I get really like into shit. So that's what I did, you know, like I did that and then I got super into buying Boost because I was single and at that time the money I was making from tattooing, I could take that money and just sort of uh, buy shoes and then it all just sort of grew from there or whatever. Um, and then as things changed, you know, like my financial situation got better, you know, like the brands still continue to do really well. The YouTube monetization is not so great, but I have, you know, sponsors here and there and StockX pays me sometimes and other people pay me sometimes. And, you know, there's been like a different, a change, you know, it was different. I struggled a lot coming up to this point like even the years before the vlog like if I could go back in time I would start vlogging and like put on 2001 really but there's a lot of time that was missed out on of like how I came to be who I am and how I got here a lot of those things involve tattooing heavily with tattooing and getting my shop robbed and falling in love with a girl and then also trying to save my friend from prison you know like this all sort of just happened all at once just drama and a lot of people who I thought were my friends are like picking sides in a story that they don't know and that, that tends to happen like human beings we tend to do this where we gain a perspective and we don't quite understand everybody else's perspective because it's somewhat impossible which is why it's a perspective we're standing next to each other the perspective is slightly off so basically all these things happen in my life you know and life just keeps going on and life keeps happening and i you know the way that i was i guess raised and the way that i adapted to being alive if you want to call that whatever you want to call it is to just like kind of keep going you know and always to keep going and to keep pushing not a lot of time to feel pain and not a lot of time to really uh reflect and take inventory of myself and my mood and how i'm really feeling and that that happens a lot 
to a lot of people, I think. But for me, I do it. I see that I do it myself. It's like finally I feel like I'm getting to a point where I'm starting to manage, be able to manage my life and manage my mood and manage my company and manage, you know, just really kind of everything and build this life that I want to have and the life that I've been really just busting my ass for, I guess, my entire life. And I'm not trying to like lose out on anything. It's like with tattooing, it's really hard to be at the shop right now because of the shop schedules and all of the crazy shop stuff going on and they've had to hire new tattooers i miss tattooing so there's that you know and i still want to tattoo so there may be in the future of like private studio thing that i'm gonna do i don't really know it's not like a diss to anybody i still like want to be around people i'm not trying to be a hermit but i've been thinking like heavily this week is about tattooing. I still want to be able to have a spot, you know, that I can just kind of go, that's all my own, which is what got taken from me. Like in New York, I my shop was robbed. I left New York because I met Alex. Well, I came out to Colorado. I met Alex while I was here just tattooing and then pretty much immediately headed back to Colorado as soon as I could. And as soon as I got back to Colorado with her and Diddy, I lost pretty much everything. All of my books, all of my equipment, other than what I have with me, like everything that I owned that wasn't in my suitcase was stolen. So, you know, so part of me has this like desire to return to that simplicity. You know, and that place, Shady Lady is what it was called, which is why I have that sign. It's the only thing left. Was a place that I like felt the most creative in my life. I was really fucked up on drugs and doing dumb shit. But also at the same time, I felt creative. It was nice to have my own spot. So that's something that's been on my mind. So I don't know what's going to happen with that, but soon enough, I do plan on being able to tattoo like more regular, 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 regularly regularly yes and even like trying to do a little tour of tattooing and just kind of like hitting the road just hitting a couple of spots and tattooing people along the way basically just like finding dividing up my plans as they were for the summer and just figuring out how I can achieve the same goal but also just make it attainable and not stressful and crazy. Um, there's been a lot of reflection like just really ever since splitting with Sager and leading up to that and having arguments, growing as an individual and talking to more people like a lot of people hit me up through this through the channel and they want to talk about their relationships and you know life and maneuvering through the world and keeping a positive attitude and I feel like I'm really good at simplifying down problems and coaching people on how they should maneuver through certain situations or at least given like an alternate perspective because I don't think I have the answers. Generally when I talk to people the feedback is that they feel better you know but that doesn't mean that I don't have like my own shit that I deal with. I think sometimes when you're giving advice to other people you start to feel you know if you don't self-reflect back on what you actually practice um, while you're preaching then there's a little bit you know there's a, there's a conversation that you have with yourself or your ego and things just don't always line up, you know? And so for the past, however long, shit has just been crazy. And I'm referring to me and Alex. Me and Alex broke up before the vlog. The vlog kind of like took its own life and I got really focused on this. As you guys know, shortly after the vlog started, the brands blew up and then it was really heavily focused on that. And then it got really heavily focused on traveling, which I really love to do and you know, I sort of, as much needed time, we both needed time to be away from each other. And we kept trying to come back together. Like there's times at the old apartment, Alex actually found the old apartment. You know, we went to Mexico together. Uh, we came back. I had kind of all intentions of really just like trying to date Alex at the time and like be in that apartment together, but it just didn't work out for a lot of reasons. And we both have our, or had our issues with it. We both just hang ups about what we had already been through and we weren't in a place where we had forgiven each other to move forward. It's like literally like the only way I, I mean that's like narrowing it down for sure but for the sake of this not being like a seven hour fucking talk that, that's kind of, I think we could both agree that that's basically where we were at. Really do well together when we're communicating properly but sometimes we don't communicate at all by no real like fault of our own and then it it's almost just like computer problem you know it's like this like two channels just don't speak to each other at some point and we just had to figure out how to like cut through all that static time apart has really done that you know we went to therapy uh a few months ago like during the old any time in the vlog where i was probably more edgy than led on probably because i was going through some shit with alex and my relationship with her my relationship with my father or just like my relationships in general. It's been a very hard, uh, just like battle of a relationship, 
But what I've realized and what I've come to realize is that a lot of that battle is self-imposed. We don't get along all the time. We're not going to get along all the time. We're going to have differences. One of us is going to say the wrong thing and someone's going to snap. Like, oh, I'm not like in some enchanted world where either of us think that those days are just gone now because we've gone through all this shit. But we've gone through a lot of shit and we've gone through a lot of really bad shit, really bad parts of each other that we've both brought out of each other before. And at some point, like, had to completely split and not talk. You know, she left for LA two months ago and um, like really needed to go. Like she absolutely, I feel like needed to go. I don't think that she should have stayed. I had been saying for years really that she needed to go out and like see different things and find different things. And never did I not want her by my side, but at the same time, like I, I fully support like sowing your oak and having new experiences. Like I fully support that. It also taught me like missing her, like her actually being gone, her being away, her, you know, somewhat planning to build, build a life that doesn't involve me completely affected me in a way that I didn't realize was going to. And this breakup that's been going on with us that over the last however long, cause we've been broken up, it's been years now. So it's kind of crazy that we're still working this out, but I've hung out with other people, been with other people, She's hung out with other people, been with other people. There's still a part, there's a, not still, there's a huge part that just feels fraudulent. Kind of like filling time or, you know, oh, this, I'll try to get to know this person. But I think we're both in a place, and I'm not going to speak for her, but for myself, I'm in a place, I don't really want to get to know another person like that. I don't really want to get to a point of intimacy with another person and try to iron through these same problems that I'll carry with me forever if I don't change how I act and if I don't look at things in a different way. And the one word that like sticks out to me uh, in this whole thing that just like kind of came to me because I don't really even know why I felt this rush to go to LA to see her. Like, I really don't. Like, I straight up woke up one night and was like, I need to go. Like, I need to just fucking go. And so it was like a rush. And then to come find out that the day we're in Joshua Tree, you know, it depends on how hippie you want to get with the shit. But the day we're in Joshua Tree is the day that there's an eclipse and it's a blood moon. And you know, if you start like looking into all kinds of symbolisms and all these other things, like it just starts to like, feels like the universe is leading you somewhere. And that's the way it's felt to me that's the way it feels to me and anytime I'm arguing with her it feels terrible because it feels like I'm resisting I'm resisting a blessing is what it feels like because she really is a good she's a good chick she's great to me she's not perfect you know what I'm saying but I'm absolutely not perfect yeah it's been interesting and I know I'm just like rambling on about this because I don't really know how to explain it because things are just gonna get different and <laughs> Basically, like to sum it up, we had a great time in LA. I had a great time in LA. Uh, said I was sorry a lot, talked about the past a lot, saw a lot of things that symbolized that I was headed in the right direction. I saw a lot of things that signified the death of uh, a feeling and a death of an ego that I no longer really feel any kind of, uh, I don't feel any identity into some of that stuff. Like some of the stuff that we say out loud to people, we don't even know why we say it. We play these characters sometimes and like, especially with relationships. Like I used to always say like, I'll never get married. I'll never get married. I'll never get married. And then I like really thought about it the other night. When was the first time I ever said that? And my parents are divorced or whatever. So maybe there's a little damage damage there, you know, as far as perspective damage. But also I remember someone I looked up to when I was younger, who was cooler, saying things like, oh, I'm never going to get married because I don't really need the government telling me who I need to love, you know, blah, 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 blah. Like just some fucking kind of like freedom shit, which I totally still agree with. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't ever want to get fucking married or I don't ever want to like spend my life with one person for the rest of it. A lot of like soul searching that I've had to do just literally in the past month from kind of switching everything up realizing how far I've come but also how far I really want to go and who are the people that I want with me and the thing is is like Ern is next to me and Ern has been next to me for a long time Alex is now gonna be next to me because she, she's been with me for a long time you know Diddy's gonna come home the story of all of this is really beautiful to me if I make the story beautiful but if I don't do some growth personally in all this if i act like everyone around me needs to grow up all the time if i act like my approach isn't the problem then i'm 
I'm like doing myself a disservice. And what I've realized again is the word approach. I, I always like when, my, when I'm talking off camera, I don't really talk about this that much on camera, but as far as I'm concerned, life is somewhat a video game. I think it can be approached like a video game. And so how I look at dealing with my relationship with Alex and my relationships in general, each person that I deal with or communicate with, don't deal with, sounds bad, has a different approach, just like a mission in a video game. If you just run straight through the front door of the fucking haunted house in the video game, then, you know, all the zombies eat you and you die. And maybe you can win that way, but you take a bunch of damage and you're all fucked up in the end and you gotta be a goddamn. It's not really fun, you know, but if you look at how this shit is designed, different angles and different perspectives, you can figure out that, oh, you can act, you can zip line in, you can sneak around it, but you can use the little key to open the door and then no one's gonna hear you and then you can, like, accomplish your goal. I've realized dealing with Earn that I have to approach him in a certain way, which I'm learning how to do better. Alex, I absolutely have to approach in a different way. Business, I have to approach in a different way. And then, you know, quote unquote, fans support, like, even like down to the people I talk to when people approach me with a, or you know, people talk to me about their problems, there isn't a blanket solution to it. I have to take the time to actually listen to what the person is saying, try to dissect what the real issue is and figure out a way to communicate with them where it doesn't feel judgy or it doesn't feel like you're doing the wrong thing. That's like the gist of it. I really don't have, like, this is just a total rant, I'm sure. I don't really even know like how I'm gonna piece it all together. But I just feel like I need to explain myself because I did just dip off to LA. I have, you know, in the past been seeing people like I don't really talk about that shit on the vlog but a big reason I'll talk about that too is because it's never anything it's never anything substantial you know it never feels like anything that's worth like really sharing with the world I am not accepting of these people uh to the degree that I am of Alex. So that's really like what it is. She's still in LA. She's gonna stay in LA for a couple more weeks. And um, I've convinced her to just come back. I pretty much have begged her to come back, to be honest. I really do miss her. I really do wanna try and like figure out our relationship together. Yeah, I mean, I basically went out there and just like, tried to prove that but the plan as of now it seems like you're gonna move in with me we're going to get back to how we were i know some people are gonna think that's crazy but she did live in the old apartment for a few months people just didn't really know about it but she was there we're gonna try and like you know turn the house into a fucking home and try to like live this life together you know like everything is great i want to like provide a great life for us i want to provide a great life for earning brandy and i really want to experience the world like with my friends and the people that i love um all the other people that are close to me i'm just talking about this core group because this is who's working on this and you know even with my other friends you know like sager and rick and the whole tattoo shop and everything over there like we're definitely like going in different directions with certain things like for sure like that's obvious i'm not gonna lie about that and there's not you know there's not much i can do about that it's just kind of like decision making shit and i don't want to feel held back in certain areas and they don't want to feel held back in certain areas. Yeah, it is what it is. And life is just getting crazy. Life is changing. And that's just what, it's cool. Like life is, that's what life is. There's a lot of change. Decisions that might seem final that aren't so final. And you go back, that's okay. That's also beautiful and it has to happen. All of these things have to take place for, you know, just to be living. You know, that's just like what it is. Nothing, nothing stays the same. So uh, yeah, a lot of changes are coming up. There is, uh, friends and family got an email today about embroidered shirts so y'all have stuff coming as well as your shit is shipping we're waiting on the shipment to come in basically but it should be here by monday and we should start shipping all that out and then the regular drop will be ready for everybody else in a couple of weeks like after friends and family get their orders is when we'll open it up for everybody else and then the frequency will pick up a little bit you know like we should be able to we're going to try and do two drops a month you know just keep it kind of on some a schedule so everybody knows what's going on but we're just like picking back up with it so that's another big change and it's been crazy just making sure we can source all the good stuff that we like to use try to get new products made and all kinds, of, all kinds of shit. There's a lot going on. But there's also been a lot going on and not just what's going on here, what's going on with me and what affects my mood and what affects my just overall well-being. I'm really excited for the future. Like I'm super excited, one, to vlog what happens and see what happens and have documentation of it. And I'm excited to uh, carry forward with the people that I love and just like crush it. Like that's all I want to do. I just want to like, I want to just be able to enjoy the world for what the world is. Like that's, that's it. And it's been great so far. And I love the support of this channel. And I love the fact that you guys let me take 
six days off and not really anybody gave me shit for it because you give a fuck about my well-being it's appreciated and it's appreciated that you guys help me do all this for these people and this all started off with just making some videos and some shoes and now it's two weeks i'm gonna fly back to la one way then we're gonna drive back i think and just do like a little mini road trip so that'll be cool and fun should be end of summer road trip uh still trying to plan some pop-ups that are coming up i was gonna try and squeeze one into la for this for that trip but i don't think we can do it fast enough with everything that's going on and i don't want to like half-ass anything all that's happening uh more drops coming in the future we're gonna try and do a bunch more travel and then of course just like making art really like getting back home settled and my girl here here. my dog is here probably gonna get another dog just like make art i just want to make fucking art and i want to be able to share art and i want to be able for you guys to get the art that you want that's really like the life i want man like art travel weed and jokes and you know some other stuff good food but oh, also i ate like shit while i was gone pretty much not complete shit but i wasn't able to fast because I just, yeah, LA food is so good. I ate ice cream, but it made me feel like shit. But also, the contrast is fine because I ate like that for four or five days. Now, all I'm craving are salads and steaks. So it'll be right back to normal, right back out to the home garage gym as soon as possible. So, probably tonight. That is the update. I think I've updated you literally on everything that there is to really up. Oh, the basement is cool. They fixed that while I was gone. But I think I've updated you on everything else. I know that this was like really long-winded and not even normal, but I feel like I needed to explain what the fuck was going on because a lot of it is not explained and I don't like that either. So anyway, that's the day. I love you guys. I have the Marble NMDs coming tomorrow, I think. So we'll get to look at those. People are sleeping on those like crazy. A lot of people are waiting to see if they go on sale. Understood. Who knows? I don't. Neither do you. We'll see. Love you. See you tomorrow.